Slocum 6, 1318. There are some things you never forget. That was the telephone exchange of that black and quite heavy Western Electric rotary phone that had its special place on our Brooklyn kitchen table. My 1950s boyhood was spent in a railroad flat. My 1950s childhood was spent in a railroad flat on Midwood Street and Nostrand Avenue. It was over Harry Kimmelman's laundry. At night, I could hear the IRT subway line trains rumbling underneath. Coal was the source of our heat in the winter months. Six small rooms for seven young children, mom and pop, grandma and grandpa, and always a cat or a dog. Sunday was Pop's day. He would take a nap after a dinner of spaghetti and meat sauce. I would watch in fascination as his silver belt buckle on his khaki work pants would rise up and fall down with his snoring. Sometimes I would snuggle against his chest and breathe in the warm scent of Chesterfield regular cigarettes, Vitalis hair tonic, Reed's butterscotch lifesavers, all mingled with good old fashioned sweat. Pop was known never to back down from a fist fight. Or Miss Ed Sullivan's television show on Sunday night. His bravery extended to him being a die-hard New York Giants baseball fan in the heart of Brooklyn Dodger country. Pop's claim to the American dream was brief. He eventually owned his own home on East 23rd Street off of Avenue D in a luncheonette right next door to the Lois King's movie house on Flatbush Avenue. Pop introduced all his children to the restaurant business, but not one made it a career choice. When he was too sick to work, he introduced them to his passion for fishing out of ships at bay, and some have continued to this day. Pop passed away at 61 years old. Mom was taken out of Catholic high school during the Great Depression. This was despite the pleas of the nuns. She is such a good student. But her mother and father didn't believe the girls needed an education. Oh, you will get married and you will have children. And until you do, you will help out in the coffee shop. Mom was actually given a beating for letting a pot of soup burn because she was so deeply engrossed in reading a Zane Gray Western. When it snowed, the boys of Midwood Street would march to the parade grounds at Presbyterian Park. No fancy uniforms, no adult supervision, just a beat up football to play rough tackle with. When it became dark, the play would end. I would enter the kitchen complaining, Ma, my feet are frozen. She would have me undo the metal clasps on my boots and then place the boots on an old addition to Daily News or Daily Mirror to dry by the door. She would then hold my numb feet under her sweater against her bare belly until they were warm again. I can still taste the chunks of garlic in her pasta azul that she would feed me. That soup, in turn, would also warm up my stomach. And now I understand it warmed up my soul. There's some things you never forget. Thank you. <laughs>